Hey guys, welcome to another Bambino VR stream, guys. Happy Sunday. Special surprise today, new plane, the uh, Advanced Flight Modeling Simulations Mooney M20. Is it the MR? I'm sorry. Let me get that right. Got so many planes in my head. The, M the M20R Ovation 3 with a G1000. And... We're lucky to have the developer of this beautiful plane in chat with us. Coop is in chat with us, and uh, say hello to Coop, and thanks for joining us. And everybody from uh, VR Aviation and various other places, thanks for joining today. I appreciate it. We're going to take a first look, first VR look at this plane and uh, fly it a bit around the Florida area. There's Coop, Coop 1019. And uh, he was kind enough to give me a copy of this plane for review. So thank you for that. Full disclosure. Appreciate that. But you know I'm going to give you my honest opinion. So, And he's ready for that too. So um, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look at this uh, plane. And we're going to we'll give – we've got about a 200-mile flight planned. So um, we've got a number of things to talk about today. And we'll get to them all. So in any event um, – so I know there's some big news with, uh, obviously, version 2 of uh, X-Plane VR came out, and there's mixed reviews on that. Some people have no problems. Some people are having some problems. So we'll see how that goes. Now, I'm also using a new mirror. I'm using the, um, the OBS VR mirror. So it seems to be better than using the Oculus mirror, both in um, utilization and also in... Um, uh, pixel density, which is good. So hopefully this will give you some better views. And you guys can't see it, but I can see chat. But because I'm using the uh, OBS version, that chat doesn't show up, which is nice because it doesn't block things. So that's really cool. Anyway, um, with that said, um, I'm sure Coop is here to answer any questions you guys might have about this plane. I'm going to go ahead and just give you a quick walk around, and then we're going to climb in it and uh, take a take a flight uh, to. Uh, um, I think we're going to Melbourne, and we'll check it out. And I've got something planned for that. So let's start in the front here. One thing I noticed is it is, it is really beautifully rendered. It's um, every detail is there. The screws, the three dimension of the um, the rivets is really really nicely done. The landing gear looks great. Another thing, a really cool thing I noticed is on the wing here, got this external fuel gauge. And although you see it as two dimensions, I see it as three dimensions. The actual, uh, the, the indicator um, dot, uh, pin on the gauge itself is lifted up from the face of the, um, the gauge, which gives it a real world feel. And the whole thing is sunken in like there's a piece of glass over. So it looks really, really cool. Nice job on that. Definitely a design for a VR. You can see the Ovation um logo right there the ovation 3 logo this is an, this is a really nice livery too i could see this livery being livery being uh modified for uh the vr aviation colors i might just do that I might just change those colors a little bit and uh put vr aviation on the back there anyway it's a really nice livery the black and the and the red do like that uh but if you get up close here you can see in three dimension you got those three dimensional rivets which really gives it a nice uh Taste to it. The other thing I noticed here, let me just get to, to the um, back of the plane here. Oh, sorry. There you go. You see where it says do not push there? Normally, when you're this close to a graphic on a plane in VR, it's blurry. But what I love about this is that the graphics are very highly detailed. So even when you're this close to it, it looks very realistic. So. And you've got your elevators right there, and there's your rudder. Again, you've got, you can see the, the indentation in the sheet metal and the sheet metal work in, uh, in, it's in three dimensions, so it really, really looks cool. These plates here, um, right there on the, the tail, on the tail end of the fuselage, they actually uh, bump out from um, the base of the fuselage, so, you, so they actually look as if they were both uh, riveted on there, which is really cool. Those are things you don't see from a distance, obviously, but, you know, us people 
that were in, in, interested in VR, we look for things like that. There's the chain tie down with a cement uh, cement block there. It looks kind of cool. Got your tie downs over there as well. There's your step up. Got the doors open. Um, you can open and close the doors from the outside, but it's a little bit tricky. I'll show you how to do that. And um, let's see, we go over here. We got uh, again another highly detailed logo there, so it doesn't look blurry at all. Which is cool. Let um, me just go over this side here. And this is the front end. You can see the um, the exhaust system there. And uh, that's pretty much it. And I can close the door just by clicking this right here. Okay, now, it would be nice, Coop, if we had something here where we could just click on it to open the door from the outside. But what you can do is you put your, your touch controller inside there and you can feel it. You get a little bit of feedback so you can find that little uh, thing to close the door. But would be nice if we had an outside not being picky but it would be nice if we had an outside uh, knob on there anyway let's go over to the cargo door and we can close the cargo door from the outside just by clicking that and same thing here if you just go inside there you can feel it and you can just open it up like that we can actually peer our head inside here look back in the cargo bay like plenty of space for luggage or whatever contraband you want to put in your mooney <laughs> no we're not going to do that and let's see here. Let me just go over to this side here. And you can see it's a four-seater. Really a beautiful plane. Um, you know, it's kind of like the Mooney always reminded me of a a uh, like a warrior with a better with better lines and better design. Just the way the tail sweeps back and stuff just makes it look a lot better. So Just reading the chat here. So the Norwich Sea, I'm sorry, I missed the, are you going to add the uh, the door? Yeah, that would be really cool to have that if you could open and close the doors from the outside. Again, that's a picky thing, but but it would be cool to have that. So, hey, uh, Sapper, thanks for joining. Yeah, the carpet textures are awesome. Actually, when you get inside the plane, you'll see did a really, really nice job. It's a highly detailed plane. This is, I've got to say, I'm, I've looked at a lot of planes, and again, I know I know I got this for free, okay, guys? But I'm telling you the honest truth because I know you you guys might buy it. Now, first of all, it is an early access. You know, as Coop said, he's adding things to it. In fact, he made some modifications to it before um, over the last couple of days. Um, but in any event, um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of planes in VR and a lot of them look, you know, they were never really designed to be in VR and they don't have, some areas are kind of blurry or not highly detailed this plane is highly detailed and i know that um you know coop uh is, if you read the website it's the whole idea is to um design a flight model that's realistic and along with that a plane that looks realistic so i really really do like the look of this plane all right cool so let's um let's uh let's hop inside here okay we're cold and dark We've got the G1000. There's two models. When you buy this plane, you get two models. You get the Ovation 2 that has the uh, the analog gauges and the Ovation 3 that has the uh, G1000, the, the uh, Laminar G1000. Uh, I'm choosing to fly the G1000. Um, and that's what we're going to check out today. So we're cold and dark here. And let's see. All right, let me get up my battery on. Okay, we can turn that master warning off. We're going to get the uh, prop and the mixture in. Hopefully, I could start this thing up properly. Let me get my... The chat's in the way there, boom. Starting up the uh, G1000. She has the Garmin logo there. And we're going to start this thing up here. Okay, cool. You can see touch controlled. Now, one question I had, Coop, uh, was I noticed that when you bring the throttle all the way back, it goes below idle, and sometimes the plane, uh, well, the plane will stall out. So is that, a, is that, 
Is that modeled after the actual plane? Like, is that how it works? Like, you can't have the throttle all the way back? I'm just, I'm just curious about that. All right, so looks like everything's loaded up okay here. I'm going to get my, um, let's see, oh, let me get my battery on and my alternator on. And I want my autopilot is on. Let's see, everything else is good. Oh, it's an X-Plane bug. Okay. Yeah, because I actually on the SR-20, the V-Flight Air SR-20 has that same issue. So I'm not sure if that – it sounds to me that that might, that might be an X-Plane thing. So you want you want to – once you start this thing up, you want to basically put the throttle at about 1,000. And she won't – she'll be fine. So that's what I basically do, put it at like 1,000. All right. And you guys are familiar with the uh, Laminar G1000, so I'm not going to really go over that. But it's very, you know, very well integrated. Um, let me just take you through the panel, all right? So just like the dial outside on the wing, everything on this panel is three-dimensional, okay? Right down to these little tiny switches on the, on the flight protection here. And every single switch works, including the fuses, the fuses work, which is awesome. How many planes have fuses at work? That's pretty cool. All right. Um, so all the buttons work. You can trust me on that. Everything on the G1000 works fine. You can trust me on that. Okay. Um, you can bring the yoke in by clicking. Oh. Well, that worked before. That's a that's a laminar thing. Before I was able to click that, and the yoke would come up. So I have to figure that out. But any event. Uh, now, the yoke is not, let's see, the end display is fully custom. If you push the display, uh, which display, which one, which button am I going to push? Display the rever revision. Wait. Oh, display backup button. Okay. Okay. All right. So if I go to system, let's see, I'm 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 not. If you're fully understanding what you're saying, the engine gauges on the MFD are custom. Okay. I see. Okay. Gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. All right, so let me, so again, trust me when I tell you all the, everything works, okay? Your enunciator pattern are very, very easy to read. Um, let me just go over here to these gauges. Now, these are all three-dimensional, have major depth. Like, it looks to me like there's about a quarter, and more than a quarter inch of depth between the, the I guess is the hosel, where the glass is, and the actual face of the uh, speed indicator on all these dials. And then the needle is jet, is out in three dimension. And same with the altimeter, and same with the uh, um, uh, the gyro. All right, everything's three, and there's three dimension to the panel. You got your cup holders down here. Uh, you got your carb heat. Okay. Sorry, cabin heat. Okay. And you got your parking brake and your defrost. Your your air. You can pull that out now. When I read this, um, when I was looking at this, the real plane. Um, the real MR20, uh, it's rated up to 20,000 feet, so it's a, is it a pressurized cabin, I guess? You've got your rudder pedals down there with the, with the Mooney label on them. Very nice, very nice. The circuit breakers all work. That's killer. I love that. I love that. I'm not going to pull one out, but you can see they turn green as I put the touch controller on them. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to test one here because I don't want the plane to shut down. But that's that's a really, really... 
Oxygen the left armrest. Well, we'll look for that at some point. All right, so um, I'll just make sure my fuel is... Uh, my fuel's good. So now it does have... Um, does have dual tanks, which you can select. Doesn't have a both switch, which I'm sure is is uh, as you would expect in the um, in the real version. So you got to be cognizant of your fuel to make sure everything's balanced properly. But yeah, I'm very impressed. It's it's very very cool. All right, so um, it's pretty much a quick VR look. The compass is very much VR. Oh, oh. Someone just followed. Who followed there? Roger, Roger. Shalimar 2. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining Bambino VR. Uh, so we're going to get our lights on, get our strobe on, get our nav lights, beacon light, and what do we got else we got here? We got taxi and landing lights. We don't need... Well, we'll go to our taxi lights on. Okay. Got our airflow there. Let's. Oh, you know what? Let's take a look at the back of the plane. There are two front seats. Now we're here in the back seats here. Not, you know, it's a typical four-seat small plane. You're not going to have a huge amount of room, but you know, you're going to have to make sure you take a shower before you fly in this plane because you don't want to offend anybody. And there's that carpet we were talking about. The really nice te texture to the uh, carpet. Very, very nicely done. Very nicely done. All right, so that's my quick look at the, the M20R, and it's very again, I really like it a lot. So let me get let me get the um, let me get our flight plan loaded here, and uh, let's clear this out here. The one thing I'm I, I asked Laminar about was the um, the granularity on the G1000 flight when you're using the, the touch controller. It, it, it's it's like you have to have the skill of a surgeon sometime <laughs> to uh, to uh, to use it properly. So I, I'm hoping that they kind of decrease that, or give, maybe they. I know they have some. They added some functionality in V2. Uh, maybe they give. They give. Maybe they give us the functionality to uh, to limit that. But we shall see. All right. So I'm going to where my Tampa. Let's see all my flight plans here. I'm going to go to Melbourne, Florida. Okay. There's my flight plan. Um, let's go to flight plan. Gonna activate that first. Oops, clear. You see, it's like it's very difficult to to turn the knob. You know, buttons obviously fine, but it's turning that knob. If there's our plan. Let me make sure I'm. I want to track up and CDI. I like to have my flight plan up right there. And let's get, we're flying VFR today, so let me get my transponder, altitude. Okay, that's all good. Um, let's get our autopilot program, so we'll get the flight director on. We're going to go to, we're going to get nav on. We're going to fly, what are we at, 19, let's, let's say altitude 2000. Altitude 2000. Altitude 2000. Altitude 2000 feet. I ever I noticed with Plane Command, I love Plane Command. It's a VR necessity. But I noticed with Plane Command that... Oh! Coop, thanks for the host. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Um, I noticed that with Plane Command, when you first use it, you have to say it three times. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but, it, but it's kind of strange. Anyway... Um, so we got our altitude set. Let's set our let's set our vertical speed. We're gonna go up. Uh, we'll go up 400 feet per minute, and that should be good to go. All we should be able to do now is turn our autopilot on. We got that power on the autopilot. Good to go, and uh, should be set. Let me just show you what we got planned in um, the flight plan here. Get myself centered here. Yeah, I'm not sure why that yoke isn't coming up there. That was working before. I would click that region, and the yoke would come up. So, not sure what's going on there. 
Anyway, not a big deal. I'm not used to yoke anyway. So let me get myself centered and we'll check out our flight plan here. I'm going to give you guys a update on um, VR Aviation as well once we get into the skies here. All right, so there we're going. We're going to um, Melbourne, Florida. Okay, we're going to come from, from basically across, uh, across the state and uh, about a 211-mile joint. Um, we're picking up some. We've got full load. three. This isn't this is going to be a big money maker. But uh, we've got a full load, three passengers, executives heading to Melbourne, and we're going to be bringing three back to uh, to Tampa. So we're going to we've got a little bit of work here. We're flying for a VR Aviation, our group. Got 50 gallons of gas, which should be plenty for 200 miles. But we'll check it once we get there. Now the nice thing about this Mooney, and I'm going to have to actually, um, I'm going to have to set up the alias here as well. So let me get that going here. Uh, show you what I'm doing here. Go there, so you can see the X plane window. All right, we're going to do FS economy open, login, start flight. Okay, I got to set the alias, and we're going to find me find a uh, appropriate plane. The Bravo, that's the faster one. And where the hell is the end? Where does it say MR20? I want to say there it is. I want this guy. So we're going to call it Mooney. Oops. Oops. Mooney. M20 Bravo. That's what it's called in uh, FS Economy. All right, so that's set. Let me get this set down here. Close. We're going to start flight. Boom, flight is started. Get rid of the X plane thing. Now we're good to go. I'm missing what you guys are talking about here. Can you use the default explain command. Yeah, for the uh, for the yoke. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the yoke. Yeah, I'm sure it takes a long time, man, to develop this stuff. All right, so we're good to go here. Um, I shouldn't say stuff. Especially in that kind of detail, right? It's just it's a it's a labor of love. All right, so um, we're good to go. We're loaded up. We've got our passengers. We're ready to taxi, and we're ready to get in the air. So let me do that. Okay. Now, the one thing I like so far is, oh, just as I was going to say it, just as I was going to say it, I was going to say it, no juddering so far. Let me close the X-plane, uh, minimize the, I always say close, I'm minimizing the X-plane window, and we're going to taxi out here. One thing I have to do, There you go. That's good. All right, cool. I just want to make sure the chat's not the right here. All right, and here we go. Oh, you know what I wanted to do before we do this? Set parking brake. Parking brake set. Let me set up my views because this way we can... I haven't set up views for this yet. I've got the same views for every plane, so. Uh, let me get to ride along, which I like right about that. Oops. 
That's gonna be... Okay, and then we go to... Left side. Right side. I have these uh, um, these keys uh, binded to my um, my mouse or bound to my mouse, so I can quickly go through view. So I can go to cockpit, rear, ride along, left, right. Just like that. Cool. Oh yeah, this is you can definitely tell this is study level. All right, let's get that set up for per, per, purpose perfectly here. Beautiful, and we're underway. Very smooth. Very smooth. We love those smooth planes in VR. It's gotta be, I gotta remember not to uh, bring the throttle back. It gets us flaps one notch and here we go. Rudder pedals are very nice and responsive. Pretty easy to keep it on that center line and rotate. Oh, it's feeling pretty heavy there. Gear up. Flaps up. Wow, beautiful plane. What a beautiful plane, man. Nice job, Coop. Nice job. There's that marker indicator. Trimming that up. You could feel the weight of this plane. We got four people in it and a bunch of gas, so... Now, Coop, do you have a forum on, uh, on X-Plane Org for, your, for this plane? Do you have an, uh, a um, yeah, forum on there? Autopilot on. Autopilot on. All right, we should just grab the uh, GPS here now. Now this plane can rip, man. I mean, we're getting like uh, 175. So you're pretty, you're moving pretty quick. Three people per, or four people pretty quickly. Oh, you have your own form. Okay, cool. Yeah, it is beautiful, guys. I have to get the, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I need to set it up so that I can not have to constantly adjust my cockpit view because whenever you do, whenever you redo the cockpit view, it, you're too far away from the instrument panel. I'm sure there's a way to do that. I just haven't figured it out yet. Let's see what we got here.
I don't know, guys. I'm sure I'm sure Coop wouldn't mind if I uh, modified this, made the red a little bit different, and uh, turned this into a VR aviation because that looks perfect for us. It really does. Looks beautiful. Oh, do you do you have a um, plane kit? Sorry, a paint kit uh, for this with the um, Photoshop files. What I love is how you can look inside and see the PFD and NFD from the outside. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I know. I understand. Oh, I understand what you mean. Lean back when I reseat myself, but I guess I just want it to be the way I want it all the time. I know. I know that that made no sense whatsoever. Anyway, what a be. Uh, okay, you have a paint kit on your website. A paint kit. Beautiful. Awesome. That looks nice, man. You know, so many beautiful planes. You know, I keep saying, oh, this, you're getting some probably changing scenery there. Getting a little bit of the judder here. Let's see what I can shut down. Now this is my first time using uh, the OBS VR too, so I'm not sure if that's causing the issue. But anyway, while we're flying here, let's go with the. Um, we're gonna do. Let's see. Yeah, could, you could probably make a custom view. Well, Coop, I really do appreciate you, um, you know, letting let me have a have a spin in this plane, and I'm gonna be, I'm working on doing a full VR review for it, which will be on my uh, YouTube channel. But I wanted to give you guys a first look at this plane. There goes the warbles. They're going now. We're probably just changing scenery or something. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying flying, it, especially the fact that it's... Oh, we're at 186. Oh, I guess we can go up to about 190 in this plane. 195, right? I mean, that's a nice... That's a nice... Uh, for a small plane, man, it's pretty damn quick. All right, cool. So let's um, let's go through. Uh, if you guys have any more questions for uh, Coop about this plane, please just pop them in the chat. I'd appreciate that. I'm sure he, he'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I want to go through a quick rundown, a quick update on um, the R Aviators uh, group on uh, FS Economy, and uh, take a look at that. So let me get my... All right, so we made a couple of purchases, or actually one purchase. I found this FBO um, in western New Jersey called Sky Manor, which is um, this little airport, which I've actually been to before. They have great burgers. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an airport that they actually say they were going to close it down, and a couple of guys got together and bought the, bought the airport and uh, were able to keep it going. But it's a really nice little place. I found that no FBOs had been built on it, so we snapped it up, we built an FBO on it, we put um, fuel repair and um, uh, it's uh, and, and a t passenger terminal, so it's ready to go. It's uh, N40, let me just bring it up here. N40 Sky Manor. We'll start to see some assignments coming up here. 
going to uh, our gates at Trenton and also the gates at N47 Pottstown, PA, I believe. So that's uh, a new FBO, which I think makes our 11th or 12th FBO, something like that. So we're growing, and this is these two small ones that we have. You can see we're pretty close to New York. I mean, I think it's about 60 miles, something like that. And um, so it's pretty close to New York. And, um, you know, it's again, it's the, it's the beginning of building out that easternly expansion. So in the bank, we've got 60, we've got 60K, so we've got a little over $1.2 million, which is nice. We're keeping that in the bank. I made it an offer to um, the guys that tr owns Trenton, KTTN. I offered them 350 for that FBO. It's a two-lotter with a decent amount of assignments, so hopefully we'll get that. Um, and we're, you know, I actually tried to make a move on Philadelphia, but the guy didn't want to sell. So trying to find ways to build out the east. Um, as you guys know, we're pretty established in Montana, and we're going to hold off the west a little bit for now until we can do some stuff in the east. And then after that, it's going to be England. So uh, let's take a look at our monthlies. We've got, almost, we've got over $2 million already in assignment income. And it's uh, February 11th, which is awesome. $800,000 in, in net profit from assignments, which is great. Um, rental income, we've got 20 k which is nice. FBO income, we got 37 k so FBOs are making money. And we're pretty much, we have 112000 or 113000 to go before we're breaking even after all our investments this month which, month, which included paying off BTM for 450 and adding two FBOs. So actually three FBOs. So that's pretty damn good. You guys are doing a great job flying. Hope you guys are having fun. If you're interested in checking out um, the VR Aviation Group, just go to groups, uh, all groups, okay? And you can go to find, where's find? Find, do type in VR aviation and there we are right there okay just hit that join button and you'll be and then we'll, we'll uh, you'll your membership will be sent to me and we'll get you approved all right all we ask is that you fly at least one time a month hopefully you'll fl fly more than that and we also have um, you know contests and stuff in fact this month's month's contest is pretty cool what we're doing is uh, the top three pilots are going to get the share of of uh, 10 percent six percent and four percent or sorry, three percent online. I always get that mixed up. Ten percent, six percent. Yeah, ten percent, six percent, and four percent, uh, respectively. So number one will get ten percent, two percent. Number two will get six percent, and three percent of the net income. Right. So that bottom number. You take a look at that uh, banking statement here. This number here, this bottom number, you'll get uh, the percentages of that. So it's a nice contest and. Uh, you guys can use that to buy planes and stuff like that. And speaking of planes, so we do have our aircraft. We've got a Baron at BTM. We've got a King Air at uh, in Canada here. Um, this is near Vancouver. Uh, two Skyhawks at BTM. We've got a Caravan in Vancouver. Caravan at the BTM, which uh, you don't have to pay any rent on, which is nice. Got another, another Caravan that we're leasing, which we're going to get rid of because we don't really need to have two of them there. And we've got my two SR-20s, one one in New Jersey and one in uh, Hawaii, if you want to fly those. And we're going to, we'll probably be adding planes. We're sort of focusing on FBOs right now. And um, um, hold on. Oh, let's see. While you're streaming, do you want to fix it so everyone can see the FBOs? Yeah, we'll work on that later. Let's, let's work on that later. Um, so, yeah, so these planes are there for you guys to fly. Only ask that you please bring them back. Um, you don't want to like fly them out like a thousand miles and then just leave them there because someone has to ferry them back to uh, to, the, to our home port and that's kind of like a pain in the ass. So just make sure you get them back. And if you're going to use our planes, if you're in the group, please fly for uh, VR Aviation, right? Because we, you know, we pay leases on these and a lot of these guys like Air Dogs and uh, Sapper, Grunge Buddy and myself, we've donated our planes to the group. So that people can fly them for uh, for VR, VR aviation group flights. So make sure you guys use these planes for those purposes. Appreciate that. All right. So that's the update. We're doing great and um, really uh, lots and lots of fun. Lots of flying. Take a look at the log here. You can see everybody. You know, it's a it's a very busy Sunday. Lots of flying going on. 
and uh, the weekends are very, very busy for us. So great job, everybody flying around and look for those, you know, look for those flights that are very profitable, you know, where you're paying um, uh, a reasonable amount uh, in uh, in fees and, and, you know, getting the best profit. So those, because those help the group. But in any event, uh, that's the update. Keep things going and uh, uh, lots of fun. So let's get to... I wanted to show you guys the, where the hell is it? Hold on, I had it up here before. This is the, um, the website for, uh, oops. I always do that, I always hit the key by mistake. I did it again. All right, this is the um, advanced flight model, modeling simulation, okay. There's that Mooney, okay. You want to check it out now? I want, if Cooper, if, are you still in the chat? Because I saw something here on your website. It says 2018 coming soon. A Lear 35A and 36A. So I'd like to know about those. <laughs> um, those are those are. Let's take a look at the 35A. That's what a Lear 35A looks like. Oof. So you're planning on doing that? Wow. So this is in development. That's all, that looks awesome. Lord knows X-Plane could use more business jets. Oop, that's not what I want. Pretty cool. I, I, you know, I'm I'm the I'm the type that likes to look at the plane from the inside out. I'm a cockpit kind of guy. Like I love to look at the cockpit. You know, that's my thing. So it looks like a. Are you know? Is this going to be an analog? Is going to be a glass? Um, a glass instrumentation, or we're going to, or it's going to be more analog gauges and stuff. That that'd be interesting to know. Yeah, thanks to Sapper for bringing that Baron back a thousand miles. Appreciate that, by the way. All right, so this is what, that's cool. So it's going to be old school Lear 35A and the GPS shot. Yeah, I mean, a 530 would be fine. 530 is a great GPS. Looks like you got room there for a 530 right there, maybe. I don't know. But uh, yeah, cool. That, 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 that's definitely something that uh, would be interesting Interesting to see. The Lears are so sleek looking. So that's in development, that's awesome. Building those jets out must be, must be pretty, I'm, I'm sure like, you know, the Mooney was complicated. I'm sure the jet is, uh, is complicated as well. And you got an H1, H800XP. Hawker. Let's look at the images of that. Another jet. Is this right? Is that right? Boy, you're working on the jets. That's awesome, man. Ooh, look how beautiful that is. Uh-oh. Hold on here. I don't know why. Uh 
Uh oh, I got the wrong flight plan in here. That's not good. Looking at my um I'm looking at my hold on a second here. I gotta pause the flight. Figure this out. I'm looking at my flight plan. And four flight has me going to Daytona Beach. Hold on. Let me look at my flight plan. I got the wrong flight plan in here. I'm going to OM. <laughs> All right, well, that's not good. Let me do this. Uh, flight plan. Um, menu. Now, that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake of... Um, yeah, because the thing is so sensitive. I had the wrong one in there. Damn it. All right, well, hopefully this will get me back on track here. So I'm talking away here, and I'm not watching your navigation. You know, they're supposed to fly the plane first. There we go. I was like, why am I going in that way? You never had issues like that until you. Uh, uh, so you never had what? Uh, um, oh, the Lear. Oh, awesome. The Lear developer is going to come on the screen. Awesome. Um, Crash, I'm, you're saying I've never had issues like that until I installed Ortho. You mean what? The judder? Oh, the washing machine effect. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, I, I know what you're saying. You know, we got to remember, it's still in beta, you know? It's still in beta. So we're, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have issues. You did that once and didn't realize until you were of the Great Lakes. <laughs> uh, isn't it Aviate, Navigate, Communicate? Yes. Streamagate. Yeah, Streamagate. Aviate, navigate, communicate, streamagate. That's all right. We'll get there. Now my plane is going the right place, the right way. Hopefully we'll have enough gas. Let's see. Oh, you know, we better check our tanks. There we go. It seems to happen, Crasher, when you're switching. Um... Hey, Mile High Fly 3R, thanks for the follow, man. I appreciate that. Flight 209 are clear for Vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? What's our vector, Victor? Um, in any event, so. Streamigation is definitely going to catch on. Streamigation. It seems like when you're changing scenery, you get this washing machine effect. Let's just go outside the plane here and see what it's like. Actually, you know what? I'm running with the X-plane. You close that X-plane window, or you minimize that X-plane window, and everything gets better. But that ortho does look good. Man, we were looking at the Lear, the, um, the Hawker. That Hawker is nice, man. Imagine having one of those. Oof. So it's interesting that you're going, you did the Mooney, now you're doing, working on two jets. That's awesome. I just, um, actually, you're probably familiar with the Challenger. Um, let's go to this Mooney. There's the Mooney. The Mooney's got different, uh, you've got a couple different um, options for the liver. You can go with the straight, um, 
um, M20R and you get the, I think, like six liveries, but then you've got um, an option where you can get custom liveries um, for the plane as well. Custom tail number, got some different options. So guys, check out the website. It's a AFM Simulation. Um, I guess that's AFM, yeah, AFM Simulation. We'll just get you there. And you can check out the store. Hey, Mateo3948, how you doing? You're the dev for the Lear 35 project? That's awesome, man. Well, it's, um, we were talking about, what kind of, we were, we were talking about uh, the, the GPS that you might be putting in that plane. What what are you thinking about as far as GPS, a 530? Hey, Jay Ryan, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Welcome Roger, to Roger. Gambino VR. Hey, Got to watch my chart here. One thing about, you guys can't see it because I don't have four flight running on the screen right now, but four flight, the plane, the moving map plane is blue and it kind of blends in too much with the the um the charts probably should use a different color like maybe a green or i don't know some different color i don't i haven't figured out a way to change that that is a good looking play man GPS, we're thinking 530. Oh, good. Yeah, so you'll have the option for the for uh, the Reality XP GTNs. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of people like that, Those, those the GTN. I've used the GTN in the Eclipse Jet. It's really nice. Um, it, it is, it, it's a nice system. But I'm also a fan of the 530. It's simple. It gets you there. It's easy to use, you know. Pretty simple. Yeah, we love study level planes, that's for sure. Yeah, so I guess other big news. Um, X uh, Laminar released um, 11.20 uh, VR2, which has a bunch of things. Let me pull that up here, see if I can pull that up. And they already have a bug, bug, uh, blog, bug post, a po uh, bug post, a post on their blog. Let me pull this up here. Some bugs in VR too. I've seen a few critical bug reports over the last over the weekend. I'm going to hold off on the Steam release. VR three should be out really soon, basically as soon as so. Yeah, I'm not going to be upgrading to VR two. I'll wait for VR three. But we just this, these things are the new features, right? You got the 3D mouse, which is awesome which uh, we all kind of asked for, and now that brings in third-level planes, um, which is, or sorry, third-party planes, which is great, okay? Uh, the laser manipulation, which I had the luxury of testing this out a couple weeks ago, um, and they were developing it, and thought it was really, really cool. The way it works is um, you use your touch controller, okay? You get, so you can see this. You use your touch controller, you look in the, the camera there, and you just basically click, you click the trigger a little bit to, to point the laser at something, and then you fully engage the trigger to actually engage the objects, whether it's a button or if it's the dial. So you can now just basically manipulate anything on the control panel with a laser. I really love that, that functionality. And I think I would use that instead of the mouse, you know? Um, they have the zoom function which I really like. It's great because now you can zoom in on, um, well, I haven't tested it yet, but I'm assuming that you can zoom in on uh, on airfields and stuff, which you really do need in VR. You know? 
yoke mode setting so you could set it to realistic or ergonomic mode for flying the, the, the plane with um, with a touch controller, which is great. Uh, VR customization, okay, which is really good. So you can uh, you can I guess you can bind things to the uh, the touch controller or the um, uh, the Vive controller. Quick zoom, uh, add a command bind. So you can press the button, you can zoom your head and really things distance a bit clear. Okay, cool. So basically that's what we were looking for. Okay. Um, Windows uh, Windows Mixed Reality support, which I'm, a lot of people would be interested in seeing. That's awesome. So some really nice features, and I'm sure they're fixing a bunch of bugs that we're they're not even talking about that, that were reported in, uh, in version 1. But it seems now that version 3 is going to be coming out of this VR3. I shouldn't say version 3. VR3. So I'm probably just going to wait for that before I upgrade. And I'll, I'll, I'll probably run this on test system first. Uh, just to make sure things are running smooth and then we'll move it over to uh live systems so that's the big news explain desktop vr2 i don't want to say desktop oh because mobile versus desktop i got you let's look at the let's look at the bug thing here some bugs uh let's see vr won't vr2 won't latch at some versions of linux okay voidus hog causes sim to crash that's not good uh, other hardware won't calibrate and crash the sims. Oh, I say they're saying file a bug report. Okay. They mentioned something too in one of the blog posts about uh, ASW for people that are using um, Oculus Rift that they're working on that. Uh, let me just see if I can find that. Yeah, I guess it's not here. It was maybe it was posted someplace else, but uh, I know that they're working on trying to stabilize things with the Rift and with uh, um, ASW. My understanding is that if you're using a Vive, you really don't experience much of those problems whatsoever. Boy, I really went way out of my way here. But just to catch up on chat here. See the latest start if you Yeah, that's cool, man. So we're looking we'll be looking forward to those new jets from AFM. That's awesome, man. And thanks for letting us uh, you know fly this plane today. It was uh it's uh, it's a joy to it's a joy to fly. It really feels nice and and um you know again I'm not a real pilot, I'm not a real world pilot, but I've flown a lot of uh you know, dozens of planes and X-plane, and you know, some are kind of like you know, toyish. And this is definitely this definitely has a feel like it's a real thing, like it's the real thing. Uh, Jay, your Dell visor. Oh, your Dell your Dell visor died. I was, yeah, I was going to ask how's a Dell visor, but since it died, that's probably not a good thing. All right, Crash, you have a safe, uh, safe uh, trip. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure audio is going to be too interesting. Let's listen to my voice, but but thanks for thanks for hanging out. Appreciate that. Half of the screen went black, so you lost one of your eyes. That sucks. All right, so those, so, so do you guys have any more questions for the guys from AFM because they're they came here specifically to uh, to answer any questions you guys have about the planes. Actually, this plane didn't really, you know, I didn't realize until a couple about an hour ago that they were working on the jets, which is which is awesome. But if you guys have any questions, please uh, type them in the chat. All right, so yeah, so those who follow my YouTube channel, Bambino Games, um, I recently hit the uh, 10,000 subscribers and have a giveaway going on here. Let me see if I can pull that up here. Um,
So I just figured. Well, that's not it. In any event, I'm giving away. Uh, we're having a 10,000 subscriber giveaway. The folks from Aerosphere uh, Simulation were kind enough to um, to uh, sponsor, as well as uh, Plane Command and the folks from XP Realistic. So we're giving away the Aer Aerosphere Simulation uh, Seminal uh, with a G1000 in it, and we're Aero also this Beach Municipal Information Delta, oh. 1800 Zulu weather, wind calm, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 14, dew point minus 13, altimeter 2992, arriving runway 04, departing runway 04, advise on initial contact you have Delta. Okay, we have Delta. Switch that comm over. Um, yeah, so giving away Aerosphere Simulation Seminole with a G1000. Copy of X-Plane, XP Realistic, copy of uh, Plane Command to one lucky winner. Go to my YouTube channel, um, Bambino Games. Check out that video. Pretty easy. It's free to, to sign up for that giveaway. And that'll be, I think it's ending on the 15th. So one lucky winner is going to win all that stuff. So check that out. Looking forward to eventually impulse buying this plane <laughs> when you get bored one day. Well, I'm telling you, you won't be sorry. Uh, I think you guys answered everything that I can quite kind of cool. Thanks for posting that, Robo. Appreciate that. Yeah, so I'm going to do a VR review, just like I, um, I'm going to do actually working on two right now. Doing a VR review of this plane. The, the two and the three models, so the analog and the, uh, the glass model. And I'm going to be doing a um, review of the, uh, the Ch uh, D-Den's Challenger 300 version 2, which just recently came out. Get myself set up here. I hate being crooked in the cabin. Uh, it's the actual resolution you're seeing... Oh, yeah, so that's a good question, Mile High. So basically, um, what you're seeing on the 2D is a, is, a, is a 2D representation, okay? And the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive or any headset, because your eyes are so close to the screen, you're going to get what they call screen door effect or pixel, pixelization, pixelation, pixelization. So that tends to make things, especially in the distance, a little bit blurry, okay, and grainy, if you will, like you said. So that's a factor of VR, and we're going to have that until we get into real solid, like, 4K headsets, which are probably, you know, six, eight months away kind of thing, although Pimax has one coming out. I'm not sure when they're coming out, but uh, I know that Rift, sorry, uh, sorry, Vive just announced that Vive Pro, which improves the density but what you're seeing is not really what i'm seeing what i'm seeing is is going to be a bit more grainy yeah armchair i bought that challenger too and i love it it's a great plane um it's the first business jet that i really learned how to, learning how to fly thanks to megaphone who's one of our vr aviation pilots uh he's giving me some tips to get up, up and running quickly um, and, uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a, it's an awesome plane. So I'll be reviewing this plane, the, the, the Mooney from AFM, and I'll be re reviewing the, um, uh, the Challenger. When I do these reviews, they're from the VR perspective. So how they function in VR, right? So that's what we're interested in. Now to that, to that effect, what I wanted to tell you guys about, go back to the, um, hold on one second here. As you probably know, I, have, I set up a subreddit called VR Aviators, okay? Easily to find it, just search VR Aviators on Reddit. And I, I started a list because I've been getting, constantly get the question, which planes are VR compatible? Oh, that's not what I wanted. So I started a list here. I'm going to have it, I have it pinned to the top, plane, uh, payware planes with X-Plane 11, X 11 native VR support. So in here, we're gonna, I'm going to keep an ongoing list updated 
of any plane that has announced VR support. Not planes that look cool in VR that seem to work. The company and the developer has had to officially announce support for 11.20 VR. Okay. Uh, once that happens, then we'll be posting those planes and those developers on this list. This is actually how I got to know Coop because he saw this and we kind of kind of started talking, which is great. So I figured this would be a good place for everyone to go. You can see we already got a ton of views on this. People interested in. But if anybody asks you, just you can go here and copy this link, and uh, you know, basically, I'm, actually, let me put a link in the chat here. There it is, right there. Okay, so you can find that great resource. And you know, as I hear about them in our Discord, I'll be adding them here, just so we have we all have a, a, a central place to keep track of that stuff. All right. When someone asks in the Facebook group, the VR Aviators Facebook group, which uh, planes are compatible, you can just type that link in. All right, Coop, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. It was a fun to do, and uh, um, thanks to your developer, the leader of, uh, was it? I forget your name. Anyway, thanks to both of you guys for stopping by, and uh, we'll keep track of what you guys are doing with those business jets. So thanks, man. All right, I'm getting close to Melbourne here, so let me get back on the plane, get this thing landed. Where the hell are we? There's my airport right there. Nice thing about the, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of get funky here. The nice thing about the Laminar G1000 is you got, it shows you the way the runways are lined up. All right, so let me just see here. I'm gonna. Gotta slow this plane down. take the GA runway. Let me set my, where's my heading bug? We well, appreciate you guys hanging out, guys. Thanks, thanks for stopping by. We'll be we'll be in touch. We'll keep in touch with you guys for sure. My guess is I put the flaps in around 110. Well, it's definitely got uh, got a great feel to it. That gear down. The gear indicator's up on the enunciator panel there. Second notch of flaps. What I love is you can see the reflection off the, uh, the 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 front of the plane there, which is get my trim up here a little bit. This is my second time landing this plane, guys.
Alright, not bad. Clean her up. Gotta remember not to pull that throttle all the way back so we don't stall the engine out. Welcome to Melbourne Airport, Melbourne, Florida. All right, let's get our passengers unloaded. We'll just do it right here. We'll let them walk to the, uh, the FBO. This is a nice day. Set parking brake. Parking brake set. All right, let me get to FS Economy. Oh, crap. I pulled the throttle all the way back. Start it up. Crap. All right, let me get to Chrome here, and we're going to go to Flight. Let's see how we did for this guy here. All right. We did, I mean, we get, these aren't going to be super profitable, but we made 100 bucks for the group, so. And we got our other fl next flight. Let's see how much gas we got. 35 gallons. That should be enough, but I'm just going to top it off just in case. Go with 50 gallons. All right, let me get this plane started up. Actually, quick way to do it is just to do control one. That's the quick way to do it. All right, good. Let me get uh, FS Economy started up. Started. And now let's head back to Tampa. You have to close, you have to minimize that X plane window. It makes a huge difference in, in uh, frames. X plane, the design just does not support two views. Which is unfortunate because, you know, not to slam Laminar, but if you take a look at, a, uh, like, Aer Aerofly FS2, they easily do um, mirror, desktop mirroring and uh, VR with no issues. Now, it's a completely different system. You know, their graphics the engine is different. Their scenery is different. So, you know, I'm sure that there's, um, there's reasons for it. But in any event... All right, let's see. Let's get our ass up in the air. We're good on the flight plan. We're good on... Let's get our flaps to one notch. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. Oh, 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 oh hold on, hold on. Let's do that. Oh, I don't want to... No, don't stall it out. I just bring it back to... Uh, there we go. All right, let's go. We've got Flight Director on. I'm going to go Nav. I'm going to go vertical. I'm going to do, let's do 2,000. So we'll go vertical speed. We'll go 500. Okay, should be good. Airflow is me at the time when they were designed in order to do, yeah, air, airplane, yeah, exactly. It's an open GL issue. Totally. Everything, all point things point back to OpenGL. Airplane sounds are really nice. I'm not sure if you guys are picking that up, but 
very stereo when you turn your head they they move around which is great airspeed's alive plane's coming up off the ground wow look at that oh i know why my trim the trim is screwed up i forgot to set the trim before i took off see that's why you're supposed to fly with checklists Flaps up, gear up. That red indicator goes off, you know your gear is good. Autopilot on. Autopilot on. All right, we'll come up to 2000 now and we should follow ourselves back to Tampa. Finally gets finished, I think, yeah, it's gonna be a whole new world, but you know, that's gonna take some time too. Man, this is a nice plane. Yeah, so I think I'm going to, uh, I don't know if I'm, I might do something different, but different, but I do really like this livery. Look at that. I mean, tell me if it could change the red a little bit, it would be really nice, but I, I think maybe we should just do our own. We'll see. I mean, listen, this isn't going to be a great money maker in FS economy, but it's a nice plane probably for flying, you know, like in small regional areas where you're, you're doing a lot of in and out of mountains and stuff like that. It's, it's an agile, agile little beast. Hey, control Alt Jeff, I'm wondering where you were, man. Good to see you. I haven't seen you flying a lot. I figured you were traveling or work or busy or whatever. But yeah, it's a beautiful plane. It really is. It's really nice in VR. It really is. I don't know if you you probably missed it, but the developer, uh, Coop, was here, and we were talking about the plane a little bit. Maybe do a livery contest. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. But if we're I was gonna do if we're gonna do that, we should do it on a plane that's stock, like maybe. The, the the 172 because everyone has access to that you don't have to buy a plane to do a livery you know if you're if you're flying an X plane which most of us are okay um, you can do it on the uh, the, the uh, 172 and I haven't done a livery for VR aviation and I was thinking about doing a livery for VR aviation for the 172 so maybe that's a good idea man. It's a good idea, Sapper. Maybe we'll do that. How many? So we've. I guess, what are, how many people we have? In the, uh, Thirteen people. Of the people here, uh, busy at work. That's cool. Yeah. Jeff. Well, it's good to see you back, Jeff. Of the people that are here, how many people would, if we had a contest, uh, a livery contest for a VR aviation livery for the C one seventy two, and I'd give you the logos and stuff. The logo, the VR Aviation logo, and the VRA logo to put them on there if you want to. How many of you would jo would would want to do that? I know Sapper would do it. Because if it's only two or three people, then you know. <laughs> the platy deer. You want to put the platy deer on something. All right, so that's two. Now, I wouldn't be in it. You, you know, I would just basically be... Um, I would be uh, running the contest, so... I want to have at least three people. All right. Yeah, I'll, we'll post on Discord and see what the lever, lever, the level of interest is. You would love to benefit from the result of the... Yeah, of course, Jay. So would I. I tell you though, this is a sweet looking livery, man. 
All right, let's take a look at some of the other ones. Let's see if I can pull those up. Hold on, we got a little bit of time here. Oh, I'm flying off course again? What? How am I flying off course? Do I have not have nav indicated? Oh, I didn't have nav on. Duh. Good thing I checked. See, this is why you need to have four flight in the cockpit. It wasn't too bad. Bring us back here. All right, let me see. let's let's check out, let's check out these liveries. Hold on. I want to see the liveries for the. Uh... Let's go to Chrome. Here's a default. Ooh, look at them. There's some nice liveries. Well, there's a lot that come with it. Can't make them any bigger. Okay. That's the one we're flying right there. This is uh Then they have some custom liveries that you can buy. Down okay, oh we can oh these are other ones you can download. Nice. This looks Look at that, they have extra liveries you can get. That's awesome. Well, look at this one. That's sweet. That's sweet. Here's the paint kit. Gotta make sure we get that. 2D, the 2K texture pack. Nice. Look what these guys make available. That's awesome. That's doing it right, man. That's doing it right. See, I would actually, you could take one of these liveries and just, you know, Oh, your livery creator wannabe mile high? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, you get you get one one, two, three, four, five, six. I think you get seven with it. Did all my mile high FSX. Oh, okay. Um, but if you look at their store here, let's see, Ovation comes with. Eleven, you get eleven detailed liveries. Okay, with the base package. If you want to go custom liveries, custom tail number, if you want to do that, they'll do that for you. Custom color scheme tail number, that's pretty cool. For 30 bucks, they'll create a custom livery for you, which is awesome. It's pretty cool. I don't know of any other plane company that are doing that. We've got the Army, Navy. I like the one we're flying. I like the one we're flying. That's a really nice one. We're back on track.
Guys, I'm just going to take a quick break and I will be right back, all right?
right, guys. Sorry, I had to take care of a couple things there. Anyway, we're uh, we got about uh, what do we got? About 50 miles to uh, Tampa. Yeah, I you know I found out about this plane. One of the one of the people on the VR Aviators group on Facebook had mentioned that it would, he really liked it. And uh, in fact, let me pull that up because I put a poll up there. second here put a poll up here I wanted to see Trying to find this poll I put up here. Did, I mean, I asked people what their thoughts were on their favorite planes in VR, and one of the people mentioned this plane. And that's how I found out about it. But I can't find the poll. Yeah, I saw the Zebo support. I want to. Yeah, Zebo's number one. Just flight arrow. Okay, so hopefully they'll be certifying that. DC three is up there. All these other ones got very few, like multiple votes. But uh, it wasn't put in here. But someone posted in the comments. Ricardo, who does a lot, Ricardo's done a lot of work with. Um, he's very active in the configuration of uh, X plane VR. Has been for a while was involved with flying side and stuff like that so he's but he um he mentioned this one and i said oh i never saw that plane before and i was like wow it's pretty cool so i went and checked it out and then the coordination of that was when i put up that post on uh reddit that coop posted that plane his plane in there and i was like oh let me check that out and that's how i found out about it for the Zebo mod at default, yeah. Yeah, the 737. A lot of people love that plane. I guess it's one I've got to check out. But right now, I'm kind of focused on the Challenger as far as jets go. I love that Challenger, man. That plane is awesome. I mean, it's not a huge FSE, FSE moneymaker. It's great in FSC for, like, large bulk jobs like you know carrying 4,000 kilograms you know 500 miles you know you can do pretty well Jack you voted for that Jay you voted for that in the in the poll the Zebo. yeah it's um I guess it's pretty uh you know pretty popular We need to figure out how to do thumbnails for liveries. The VR aviation ones are too pretty to show up as. Where do they throw up as show up as throw up? Where do they show up as question marks? Robo, I'm confused. Do you mean like in the X plane window? Like an X plane? Oh, an X plane. You just what you do is when you're in a flight, you just do generate icons. Yeah, like Sapper said there. So when you do generate icons, they'll show up. So just go into, but you have to be in a flight. You have to have a flight initiated for it to work. So you go into a flight and then go back to the flight configuration menu and go into the customize for that particular plane. And there should be a button that says um, uh, generate icons. And then it'll go through and like regenerate all the icons. Yeah, the Zebo is for free. I guess that's, you know, 
if I was going to get into a tube, like, you know, flying a commercial de- jet, that's probably probably would be the first one that I would try out. Since it is for free. So I mentioned I've I put an offer to um, the people that own uh, Trenton Mercer KTTN because um, they had said that they were willing to hear offers. So I offered them three hundred fifty thousand dollars for that FBO. I think four hundred K. We kind of agree that four hundred K is a fair price for it. It's a two lot FBO. It's already built on. It's got a bunch of supplies and stuff. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Yeah, it's a, it's a two lot FBO, okay. Located, and it'll be right around. We'll be able to put. It'd be easy to to, to uh, connect our two smaller FBOs to it in in uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. And it'll be a good basis to begin with. Uh, we already own four uh, three gates there. I think we have we're, we're renting three gates there. And uh, you know, it's it's not a three lotter, but it's a two lotter, and it would be a good start. You know, finding a three lotter is going to be hard. I'm going to keep pushing and try to find one in the area, uh, but that's going to be tough to do. But hopefully, we'll be able to get that done and get the east going. And in the meantime, you know, we're um, in the meantime we're building up cash to be able to afford the FBOs that we want to buy when we're ready to buy them. That's I feel like that should that's kind of the the philosophy. You know, rather than spending a million dollars on this plane and that plane. You know, I think renting planes is fine. Um, you know, maybe there's a couple of planes that we might buy down the road once we get our FBOs established. But I think going after real estate and FS economy is probably a better move than investing in the planes. You know, I just I think we kind of, hopefully we all kind of agree to that. Because we can, you know, if we get those FBOs running right, I mean, you could see the ones that we have now, you know, we're doing pretty well on. You know, we're making 37K, and, you know, I know if I buy a Challenger and I've got to get it repaired, I'm going to take it to one of our FBOs to have it repaired, right? Um, Because it'll keep the money in the the group. If we all do that kind of thing, like we buy gas at our FBOs, we repair our planes at our FBOs, et cetera, that'll just help, you know, put money back into the pockets of the group. Even if it were pay, there's Zebos uh, X737800, a very good. You would have paid for it. Okay, well that's good to know, and I, I, I'm gonna have to check that out. And like I said, if I got it the first when I get into an airliner, that's probably gonna be the first one that I get into, for sure. I'm glad it's good to know. But you know, you could see here, you know, we we only have a few FBOs, and we're turning a pretty good profit, so. If you manage them correctly, um, they can make money for the group. Well, Jay, listen, join our group. It's VR uh, Aviation. Just fly once or twice a month to get started, and when you get more time, you can, you know, you can get more into it. And then at least you're part of a group, and there's a lot of... We have a nice Discord where people are talking and chatting and helping each other out and stuff like that. And especially if you're into VR, most of the people that are flying in VR aviation are into VR, so there's some good discussion there too. You know. Yeah, Robo, I understand. I know what you mean. I, I I'm not. It's it's not fun to to watch a plane on autopilot for five hours, right? But I'll tell you what, it is fun to land a jet. Landing that Challenger is, um, 
Oh, Jay, you're on the Facebook and Discord. Awesome. Landing that challenger is a challenge. It's different. It, you know, at least, you know, I've only done it maybe about a dozen times now. But it is a, it's definitely, I feel like I can land pretty much any uh, prop GA plane, pretty much, you know. But getting into that jet was a challenge for me. And making sure, you know, you're doing things correctly and, it was, uh, it's a challenge, and that's what I liked about it. You know, that's what I like about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Mile High. It's not, you don't have to, you don't need to be in, in a VR, uh, uh, flying in VR to join. Anybody can join, VR or 2D, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You do short hops in the 7-3, in the 7 three, in the seven three that's good. Yeah, you know, you can also do time compression in uh, in FSC too, if you wanted to. I know a lot of the, the the tube flyers on longer flights they'll do use time compression. Time compression works in FSC. Now there's a limit, like you can only do 30 hours a flight in 48 real hours, so they kind of limit you. But um, if you're doing those long flights and you want to do some time compression, you can do that. Yeah, to me, the thing about the jets is the complexity of learning the systems, you know? That's kind of cool. Like, learning the systems is kind of cool. Like, I like the the challenge of that, you know? And that, with the Challenger, no, no uh, you know, pun intended, the Challenger, uh, there's some systems that you have to learn to, 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 to use properly to be able to fly it properly. Right, we're getting close to uh, we're getting close to Tampa here. Hop back in the plane. Gorgeous plane. All right, let's get in there. All right, we're at 2,000, so let me, let's me let just let's check how this autopilot works here. So we got a little bit of ways to... So we're going to crank her down to... Where's my altitude? We're down to 1,600. We'll hit a vertical speed, and we'll go down 1, 2... We'll go down to 300. What? Wait a second. How am I at 7,000 feet? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I know what happened. <laughs> I forgot to... Uh, oh, that's not good. I forgot to turn on the uh, altitude hold. Wow. That's not good. All right, I need to get down in a fast here. Here I'm talking away, climbing away. Like, why am I a 6,000th? Right, let's do this the right way. Tell you what, let me level this off. Altitude 2,000? Altitude 2,000 feet. Right, let's go, uh... Let's go, um, let's see. Autopilot, nav. Let's do... What? Why does it keep wanting to go... Turn that flight director off. Okay. I'm just going to hand fly it. We're going to have to get way down here. Tampa's over there. And I lost my chat window. Let's see if I can pull that back up.
I don't know what the hell happened there. And now I'm off course. Right, let me turn over here. I know Tampa's over here. All right, so I didn't properly set my autopilot. There's Tampa. So this will take a little bit of work to get myself straightened out. Tell you what, this thing is really fu frugal on on fuel for sure. All right, we're good. We're doing good now. We are definitely over speeding. Yeah, Plane Command J is specifically for X Plane. And the developer is constantly adding um, X Plane specific commands. You can check it out, it's planecommand.com. 20 bucks, well worth it in VR. Slow this plane up a little bit. I do love that about the G1000, having that, uh, you can see the runway. I mean, I can see it there, but having it right there on the map is nice. There's Tampa. This is the nice thing about flying a GA plane. You can maneuver it. We got 800 feet. Let's get that a little up here. Yeah, I mean, this yoke is heavy. I mean, you it's not like... This thing is not like, you know, easily manipulated. It... They did a nice job of this modeling. I would imagine that this is what a real plane feels like. You know, when you got to pull up to get that plane to go up. Get that first notch of flaps in there. Make our base turn. Gear down. Second notch of flaps. Turn final. This is what's great about VR. Having that visual, be able to just look anywhere. Trim up. Lined up, get her down about 80 knots. Here's that marker.
Not on the center line, but it's a big runway. Set parking brake. Parking brake set. All right, I want to try something now. Oh, crap. Oh, 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 damn it. Oh, it doesn't matter. All right, let's end FS economy here. And what I want to try is I want to stand on the runway. I want to watch. I want to see if we can watch the landing. Kind of cool. Yeah, I floated. I know, I floated. All right, let's get out of the plane. I'm going to stand right. Let me just go over here. Okay, where's the plane? Oh. Plane's right there, so I want to go over there. Stand right here. Now, what I should be able to do, actually, no, let's go over here. Right there. What I should be able to do is do rewind. Plane should we rewind now? So, come on, come on. What's happening here? This isn't going to work? Why isn't this working? Okay, this isn't working now. It's not showing any to, to me in VR. All right, that didn't work. Oh, X-plane crashed. That's not good. Shit. Oh, well, guys. Well, I'll show you here. Let's go back to... Well, that was a good intention, but apparently X-planes crashed. So let me go back to the log. All right, we'll see how we did with this. There's the Mooney. And we made a grand. So altogether, we made, what, about two grand for the group. But, uh, you know, still, it was a nice flight. It's a beautiful plane. I really did, do like flying it, for sure. Let's just take one last look at the log books here. You got Sapper there with a nice uh, DC-3 run. And Crash, Era's running. Brian, Runge Buddy, IZ, uh, IZ zero, uh, zero Z is running. So everyone's doing some some work to the NFS economy. Yeah, apparently um, it didn't like the fact that I went outside the cockpit. I tried that before. You can stand on this side of the runway and you can watch the plane land, which is really cool, but apparently it didn't work there. So, in any event, we'll try it again next time. Well, listen, guys, I appreciate you guys watching the stream. For everyone that was hanging out, you know, please um, uh, hit that follow button if you haven't already. Oh, did we get it back here? Let me see if we got it back here. Nope. Explain is still hung. Um, hit that follow button and hit the notification button. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and that little bell, that notification button too. And uh, you want to make sure you check that out. I appreciate everyone uh, watching. We're going to host someone. Let me see if I can, we can pick up here. Uh, let's see who we can pick up here. Well, you know, John Fly hosted me. The other day, so let's 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 give old John Fly a host. Let's do that, right? Let's get over and watch John Fly. I don't know what the hell he's flying there, but let's let's give John Fly a host here. Slash host. There we go. What happened there? He crashed. Take care, guys.